make sure you check out my website pcteach.me where you can look at all the videos in particular category orders also have the ability to contribute your own posts if you wish and I hope to see you there so as discussed on the previous video we were talking about the fact that although we've now got our date dimension structured correctly we have this little pesky thing of making sure that the cube is highly performant and at the moment it will not be and um, the reason is although it looks nice to the end user we're not instructing the cube as to how best to pigeonhole its aggregations so all we've got then is we're going to open up the next project um, and this will be in uh, dimension attribute relationships and we'll just open that up so we've now got a point of seeing the um, the date dimension again but once it opens up we still have this squiggle um, and it's because of attribute relationships now if you're in 2005 this was an absolute pig absolute pain to actually set up in 2008 moving forward they've now created a new tab called attribute relationships which very clearly defines the problem fixing it on the other hand is slightly um, I wouldn't say difficult but it's a bit backward and, and you'll find out why so let's go to attribute relationships so at the moment what it's saying is okay graphically it's saying okay well I've got the date key which is let's base it boil it down to it is a specific date and then I've got a series of semesters I've got the actual um, calendar year the quarter the month name and the um, alternate date but what it needs to know is really going from the most specific the most specific to the most generic how does it work now let's just work this out so back in dimension hierarchies you're going from the most generic down to the most specific in attribute hierarchies or attribute relationships you have to define the most specific to the most generic so what comes after date going upwards well that's month so what we need to do is we need to get the English month name which has already been defined but where does English month name go well English month name goes to calendar quarter so what we do now is we right click on here and we do new attribute relationship and say from the English month name it goes to oh look the calendar quarter it's already worked it out so if we just click on OK what it now does is can you see our calendar quarter is no longer associated with the date key but it's associated with the month so we now do the same with the calendar quarter and the calendar quarter goes to oh would you believe it the calendar um, semester now how does it know all these things because you've took the time to set it up already in the attribute properties if you didn't you could have done this first of all but then you would have still had to have done all of the indexes and so forth as you set them up before so calendar semester goes to calendar quarter does it well no it doesn't actually in this case it actually goes to calendar year now the reason being is once you get to semester you've reached more or less the top of the pile so it doesn't really know where to go at this point so you then have to take control and tell it which is which so now if we click on OK there we go we've now got the calendar year semester calendar quarter down to the English month name but we've still got this date alternate key well technically the date alternate key was the date that we we used so the date goes into month so go to full date alternate key and tell it go to the month which is the English month name and there we go so we've now defined our hierarchy the other way around so we've now got it the other way around so let's just save that question is has that squiggle now gone off the hierarchies it has has indeed so we've now got a fully optimized hierarchy so let's just process this make sure everything works okay again I need to put in my password and everything seems to be okay does the hierarchy say anything new no nothing at all Great, so that's done. Go to the browser, reconnect, and dates. Does it look any different? No, it doesn't. However, we've now got it in a structure which is absolutely bang on right, and it is now ready for um, aggregations to be done to it properly. Now, for this, I'm going to need to do a diagram to actually explain 
what is actually going on behind the scenes with their attribute relationships. But suffice it to say, think of them as pigeonholes. If I wanted to add all of my um, internet sales by year, I've now got it in a structure that it knows where to pigeonhole it. It knows where to pigeonhole it by semester, by quarter, by month, and basically by date as well. So we need to actually go into that in a little bit more detail. But we've now got the attribute relationship section done. Now we've also got it over here saying that we've got things where um, user defined hierarchies and it says define attribute relationships as rigid where appropriate. Right, okay, so what the heck is rigid? Right, Let's think of this another way. If you've got a location hierarchy and you've got um, country going to um, county or sorry, um, region, then to city. Um, if you look at the United Kingdom, you could have the country of United Kingdom, the region of, say, West Midlands, which would contain things like Birmingham and um, Staffordshire and things like that. The key thing is, though, when you actually get to um, big cities like London, okay, let's go through the hierarchy now. You've got the country of UK, then where's the region? It's not regionalized to a particular area. For example, if it was America, you could ch choose New York State, followed by New York City. Um, in the UK that doesn't happen. You've actually got London as a region. So now we've got a particular problem. We've now got what's known as a ragged hierarchy, indicating that not all levels are going to be populated to the same tier. So how do we actually define these in um, our attributes? Well, we know that this is a very well naturally balanced um, hierarchy. Now there's two things here. Natural. It's natural because they naturally flow into each other. Because they do. That's the natural order of things. They're also balanced, meaning that it's always going to have a set structure. Year will always go to semester. Semester will always go to quarter. But if you then talk about regional information or talk about divisional information, is that going to be as structured? No. So we then need to define them as ragged hierarchies. And this is not done on the actual hierarchy level here. We have to define the base data. So let's have a look at, say, um, the month. So we go to English month name. Over here on the right hand side, we've got all sorts of different options available to us. And really, we're looking for the one that actually defines whether it is um, ragged or not. So to define them, what we have to do is we go to, say, the attribute relationship again. And we know that it is pretty rigid on the fact that the date key um, is basically the same as the alternate date. Because if it's got a date key, which is just a serial number, it's got to relate to a date. So it is a one-to-one -one mapping. So if we click onto this link here, you'll notice that on the properties, it says the relationship type is currently flexible. So what we do is we change it to rigid. And what we then do is the same thing on here. But notice now the icon has now changed to indicate whether it's a flexible kind of hierarchy or whether it's a rigid hierarchy. So we're going to go through all of these because we know that this is a very balanced structure. So it is going to be a rigid structure. OK. So if we go back again to that, let's just save it. What else is the dimension complaining about now? So let's have a look. So it now says, avoid visible attribute hierarchies for attributes used as levels in user-defined hierarchies. So avoid visible attributes hierarchies for attributes used in there. So what it's saying is, if you are using these particular values in a hierarchy, then really there's no need to show them over here because it's a duplication of effort. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because if you can see them in the hierarchy, then what's the point of actually seeing them over here? here. So what we can do is we can click on it and although we still want them, we just don't want them visible. So on here, somewhere, hiding around somewhere, is it's if the um, attribute hierarchy is visible is true. Let's turn that to false. Now, question is, if we do that for all the others, so calendar semester, the same thing. Notice there's enabled and visible.
and where's the full date I'll take? Right. So we've done that, let's just save that. <gasps> Look, the squiggle's gone. Right, so let's just now reprocess this and see what the finished article looks like. So will we run this? Seem to be done. Let's click on close and then browser and uh, reconnect and refresh. So let's have a look. So on the dates now, have we actually got those other values appearing now? No, they're not there. We've got fiscal year, but we've not got calendar year. They're, they're all inside um, this structure. Now, fret not, because you can still select the calendar quarter and calendar year. You just told them not to appear in the actual um, main list. Now, this sort of now goes to the fact of, OK, well, why is that such a big problem? It's down to how we aggregate the data. And for this, we now need to actually flip to a diagram. So, to the diagram. This diagram is very, very basic, but hopefully we'll get the point across of, as to why you need to do your attribute relationships. Because what we've got at the top right here is just basically our um, sort of fact table, and it's being used by the date key here. So, the fact table has no concept whatsoever of what a quarter, a semester, or a year is. All it's got is this serial number, the key, indicating what the date is. Um, but the, even to the computer, it doesn't know what a date is. Um, so I've just put in brackets here that it's January, February, March, and April. Um, so basically we've got um, one year, 2001, um, but it's actually being put into potentially um, one semester, but two quarters and four months. Um, so how does the cube actually work that out? Well, here's the actual starting revelation if you've been playing around with cubes a bit. Um, the starting revelation is that a cube does not aggregate or pre-aggregate any data at all um, unless you tell it to. So most of the work that you do will be done on the fly. So when you actually bring in two particular um, dimensions and put them into a um, into a cube structure, um, it's actually working it out on the fly. It's not particularly great. Now, you could immediately be kicking and screaming, those of you which have used it before in the past, and saying, oh, no, that's not true, it will do it. Um, Yes and no. Um, it, it, it is set up to actually do these aggregations, but because you've not ex really explicitly told it how to actually do these aggregations, then you do have um, um, not a very performant system. So the attribute relationship will simply do something along the lines of this. is When you process the cube and say, I want everything to be processed, um, it would then look at the dimension hierarchy that we've specified here, which is year, semester, quarter, month, and day, and then work out how best to actually put it all together. Now, the funny thing is that at the year level, we can easily do this. So it's 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 4 means the year is 10. So the value in total is 10. Semester-wise, well, it's all in the same value. It's still 10. Quarter-wise, now we have a bit of a problem because it's 3, 4, 5, 6 for the first quarter. But hang on, what about the second quarter? Because the second quarter is four. And then we've then got the month. Well, this is now where it goes completely out of whack. One, two, three, and four. And then the day, wow, well, in this case, it is one, two, three, four. But imagine if there was two Januarys in there, then the numbers will then um, differ. So what goes on is just because of the attribute relationship that we set up is we're saying specific to generic is because at the specific levels, and let's just make this a little bit more complicated. Let's just insert another row here. And let's say for February 2001, February, and it was on the, uh, let's say, the um, well, 7th. 7th, there was a 0.5 figure put in. <clears throat> What's that going to do down here? Well, on a month level, um, we've got two Februarys now. So technically, the month level there should be 2.5. Oops. Don't you just love autocorrect? 1, 2... 2.5. There we go. Well, sorry. Let's get that right. Dear, oh dear. Um, that is the answer for the bottom bit, which is um, here. So it'll be 1, um, 2.5, and then 3 and 4. And so 
what will happen then is on the most specific you go to a particular day, a day key, and it will give you the value. So you can imagine all of this is literally that. But when you go to the month you need it to aggregate up. Now because you've done your dimension um, relationships, the attribute relationships, it will now have the facility to compile all of this as to one value. So let's forget month because it's a little bit messy. Let's just look at year, quarter and semester. Um, year would be immediately just told to add up all semesters. Semester will be told to add up all applicable quarters. So in 2001 that we're using here as the example you can see that although the quarter had two quarters one with a value of six which technically will now be 6.5 and four what will happen is at the semester level it will just add them all together and then the year will add both semesters together and give you that answer so bit by bit what's happening is you're building up your entire um, structure from these actual ag ag aggregated um, structures. So it's very important to understand that when you do relationship attributes that the attributes themselves become the pigeonholes of where the data is actually going to be stored thus making it far more optimal. If you don't put in the relational attributes then you are not going to have a performance system. It will be extremely slow and very very um, low on um, performance and it would make everybody's life a nightmare. So what actually happens is by doing these hierarchies and by doing the attribute relationships you are preparing your data structure to be highly available and extremely fast. But there is a um, flip side to this, it's a seesaw, um, because the more structured you make it the more data it's going to need to store. So there's got to be a right kind of balance between what we do in regards the attribute relationship versus what we do um, with the data that's being stored. So for example if I am actually going to the degree of saying I want to actually show um, the total of the year but I want to actually see these subsections how much data do we want to actually store on the system. Now this comes into the wonderful realm of something which is very dear to my heart which is the actual MOLAP, ROLAP and HOLAP which we will talk in the next video. But basically this is the way that we would actually do our storage mode to indicate how much data is being stored in the cube pre-aggregated versus stuff that you want to do on the fly. So that's where the next video comes in.